So in this video we're going to look at checking the timing on this BMW N47 engine. Here we've got a known good timing chain, I just replaced it yesterday. So this is part two of the BMW N47 timing chain noise saga. Make sure you go and check out part one if you haven't done so already. In that video we did the camshaft crankshaft correlation test, however we had a bad engine, we looked at some advanced triggers to use on the Pico scope which helped us diagnose that issue. If you haven't done so already, make sure you go and subscribe to the channel below. This way you can keep up to date with all the other automotive diagnostic videos that I upload. Hit the bell and turn on notifications so you never miss one. I'm using the PicoScope 2204A here. It's connected to some Handtech automotive leads. Uh, it's really good value, around £100. Links are in the description below. So if you're looking for a new scope, go and check it out and use the links to help the channel. So after confirming the issue with the timing chain the other day, I got the car in and replaced all the timing gear. So after taking it all apart, we did have a look at the timing chains and they didn't really seem stretched compared to the new ones. So once I'd put the camshaft locking tools on at the top and got the gearbox out, I did go down and check how far out the timing was. As we can see here, we had to turn the flywheel quite a bit before we could get the locking pin in. So I'd already loosened off the camshaft sprocket so we could turn the crankshaft while the top was locked. So what we also noticed was the non-tensioned side of the chain was actually quite loose. And this could have been where our problem was. However, it might have also come from where the engine was turned backwards and forwards while I was undoing the bolts for the torque converter. So when I was taking out the top guide, the one that's held in with the tensioner, um, I took the Torx bolt out and that guide actually just fell out and I would have thought that you would have had to release some tension to get, get that out properly. Um, so that could be another issue there, you know, as I said, I think it was more a tension issue rather than a chain stretch issue. But as you can also see, there is quite a difference in the size of the chain tensioners. So maybe there's an issue that they know about with the tensioner. You see the old one is quite a bit shorter than the new one. So I'm thinking this was more an issue with the tensioners rather than the chains themselves. But anyone who knows these engines will know that if you've got the chance to replace them you're better off just doing them. Uh, they're snapping left, right and centre. And what we'll do today is compare the two measurements. We'll get the old reading up, take a time measurement from it and then compare it to what we've got today. We'll also see if we've still got that drift between the camshaft and crankshaft. So I did uh, save a file from the bad timing chain. Just to open that up, called it 520D cold long trace because I did it on a long time trace. Okay, and it's already in the part where we took the measurement. So I'm just going to zoom in on that again. Those of you wondering where the differences lie with the automotive scope and this 2204A scope. Is we can see on the screen now we haven't got a very high resolution there so we've recorded this on a kind of long time base I can't remember what it was half second divisions um, I think it was and you can see we haven't got really you know square peaks and um, that's because of the sample rate of this scope it's, it's great when we've got it at the low time setting so around 20 milliseconds two milliseconds but if we want to do a long record and then zoom in the resolution isn't so great with this one but it's good enough as we can see here so we've already got a time measurement up there we're reading between the TDC mark and the beginning of the long camshaft mark there and we've got seven milliseconds eight milliseconds so we can do a degrees measurement so if we pull across from the bottom right hand corner where that green circle is to our first reference point here and then we'll 
do the same again to 360 degrees on so we're going to the same point but one full revolution on we've now we've now identified 360 degrees so if we go to the left hand side then and pull that across to the reference point we wanted there we've got 40 degrees so that was on the bad chain 40 degrees remember that so we just need to remember which part of the cam trace we took that measurement and we can do the same measurement on the known good trace in a minute so on this one it goes past TDC high and then it goes low that's where we're measuring to if you also remember we had quite a bit of drift on that mark there I'll just remind you and there we go can you see that so this is how still here yet we can see there's a bit of a fluctuation on the camshaft so let's start up the engine set up the scope and see what we've got so it sounds better already let me just remind you of the pins I used and where I connected them. For the crankshaft I'm in pin 87 and that's a black and red wire. For the camshaft I'm in pin 62 and that's a yellow and violet wire. Both pins are in the same connector, it's the bigger connector of the two. All I did is unconnected the block, turned it upside down and just made a note of where the pins were. So we've got the crankshaft connected to channel A and the camshaft connected to channel B. So I'm going to turn channel A to 20 volts. We're going to go to 20 milliseconds per division. And we're going to turn channel B on at 20 volts as well. It's going to bring that up. So let's just stop it there and take our reference measurement here so we went from here to here so so now we've got six milliseconds on that gap there compared to eight milliseconds before I replaced all the timing gear so now if we do the degree measurement on the good trace so on the good timing chain let's pull across so that first reference point and then we'll 360 degrees on to that reference point and then we'll bring our other ruler in from the left hand side and there we've got 30 degrees wow so 10 degrees of crankshaft revolution out that's quite a bit so just for perspective, that's where the bad one would have been reading. Quite a bit out. So now let's set up the advanced trigger and see if we've still got that issue with the camshaft phasing out from the crankshaft. So I'm just gonna set up an auto trigger. I'm gonna move it over here so you can see what happens when we set up that advanced trigger. So we're gonna click on this advanced triggers here we're going to go to pulse width and we're going to increase that time there to 800 microseconds and you can see now that the pattern's being held still on that gap in the crankshaft so let's just move that into the middle now and we're going to reduce the time Oh, look at that much much better so this is what good looks like so I'm going to save this waveform I'm just going to go to save I'm going to call it BMW N47 cam crank good Okay, so there we go, all fixed. So 
I am going to save these PicoScope traces and make them available for you to download. If there's not already a link to my website in the description below, it's because I haven't done it yet. If there is, head over there and check it out.